It's a sad thing to feel alone, especially so in the information age where we are subject to constant insights into the lives of others but often denied genuine connections. Before Game of Thrones, writer George R. R. Martin wrote a story centred around loneliness, and the story would later be adapted into a comic book by Raya Golden and Jet City Comics. Meat House Man is part three in a series known as the Corpse Handler Trilogy, a story set in the far future where humanity has colonised hundreds of planets and decided to outsource almost all labour to corpse handlers. Corpse handlers are blue-collar necromancers who puppet company-owned dead bodies to undertake tasks such as mining and woodcutting, as well as using their undead for blood sport and theatrics. Each story focuses on a different corpse handler and their individual struggles against corporations, competition in a dying industry, and the isolation that is present in being a person who physically pilots corpses for a living. Meat House Man is the darkest of these stories. It's an unflinching and honestly downright cynical look at human connection, an intense look into the despair of being utterly unable to find any kind of genuine love in a dystopian world. Its protagonist, Greg Traeger, is both a sympathetic figure and an abhorrent monster. He's one of the most nuanced looks at loneliness ever put to page, so today I want to talk about his story and what it all means. But before all that, content warning, Meat House Man is one of the darkest works by the author who wrote The Red Wedding. It features graphic depictions of violence, undertones of less than healthy relationships, all set to the backdrop of a world where intimate relations with the undead is considered the norm and features heavily in the story. I hope I was able to get my point across there and not immediately be demonetized. This is a really heavy story, and whilst I personally like it, it definitely isn't for everyone and you're welcome to leave. This is super advertiser unfriendly, I don't know why I put this together, so if you enjoy, just press the nice buttons below and we can all get along. Also, this video is going to contain spoilers, so go and read it first. This story is like an hour long, maybe even less than, so I can wait. With all of that out of the way, happy Halloween, I'm the Rat Man, and now it's time to discuss Meat House Man, one of the most depressing and lonely stories ever put to page. Meat House Man begins on Scracky, a dismal rock of a planet where corpse handlers pilot immense machines with crews of dead men to mine away at ore fields. Traeger, our protagonist, is an orphaned young boy with an exceptional skill for corpse handling. We meet him warily following older boys to a meat house following their first payday, meat houses being brothels where the bodies of undead women are splayed upon beds for men's pleasure. Traeger first calls the body her, but promptly corrects himself to it before doing his business in the dingy room. During the act he says that the thing is not a woman, but meat. His views towards women for the remainder of his life will be shaped by this one interaction in his teenage years, as Traeger simultaneously becomes driven by a desire for genuine love and connection, but also continues a habit of viewing women as glorified masturbatory aids rather than human beings. Side note, I had a really funny sponsorship segue planned here, and then I remembered I don't do those. But imagine how funny it would have been. <laughs> Traeger continues to visit the meat house, falling madly in love with an imaginary woman, the corpse handler he believes is controlling the bodies in the brothel. He's so starved of connection that he begins to believe behind these lobotomized sex workers is his perfect woman, a strange parasocial bond with an imaginary persona. Quote, He was a good handler, Traeger thought, but the handler in the meat house, now she must be an artist. This belief that his dream girl is somewhere beyond the bodies he treats as inhuman meat is reflective of a uniquely modern strain of parasociality, wherein young men will vocally be opposed to sex workers yet still rely on them for connection, developing a fascination with the person behind the content they consume whilst decrying the content itself. Traeger views the bodies as meat, but believes beyond them is a perfect woman who would fall madly in love with him if only she could meet him, if only she could give him a chance. The brothel is both a house filled with meat and his only connection to woman. There is a dual purpose at play here. Traeger's illusion of the perfect woman is shattered by his co-workers, who laugh at him when he reveals his desire to meet the brothel handler to them. The bodies in the meat house aren't controlled by anyone. 
They simply reflect the user's desire back through a piece of machinery called a feedback circuit. Only handlers can control the woman. Men who aren't corpse handlers will only find dead bodies upon these beds. Traeger's perfect woman is himself. He's the one providing all the pleasure by engaging in these routine acts of defilement. Disgusted, Traeger swears off the meat house, instead resolving to find genuine love. He says he will take the hard road of connections, feel the pain, and maybe even the love that comes with forming real bonds. Connection is what Traeger desires above all else, but his co-workers think he's an idiot, he doesn't have any friends, and his only experience with women is effectively using them as meat to pleasure himself. So, he's in a really bad position here. Over the following years, Traeger increases his corpse crew size to 5, becoming the most competent miner in the ore fields, saying that sometimes he feels not like a man with 5 corpses, but a man with 6 bodies. He still believes that his life can improve at this point. The text reads, He still had a faint glimmer of hope alive inside him, something he hungered for, yearned for. Some nights he'd wake, dress, walk the corridors for hours, resolving that each tomorrow would be the day he changed his life. And on one such tomorrow, a change would come. One day whilst mining, one of Traeger's vehicles shuts down and he signals for an engineer to come and fix it. Here he meets Josie. She's a headstrong and tomboyish engineer and Traeger almost immediately falls head over heels for her. Traeger says that she sees him for him, not a corpse handler, but a man. This story doesn't touch much on it, but in other stories in the trilogy, especially Nobody Leaves New Pittsburgh, it's shown that corpse handlers are viewed as dirty and low class by others. They provide an essential service, but their industry is viewed as immoral. Corpse handlers tend to live within their own communities and have minimal contact with people outside of their field. They've got all the classist hatred associated with them of the real world working class, but with the added fact that they puppet corpses, something that most normal people consider to be at best very odd. So being viewed as a person and not a corpse handler is actually a big deal and touches on the insecurity inherent to the field that likely informs Traeger's intense desire to be loved. Traeger's loneliness is to some degree systemic, the story later comments on how his intense day job kills his ability to meet other people, he just has so little free time. Traeger is invited to a party by Josie and he attends. Josie throws a lot of parties in fact and he attends all of them. Sometimes they even get to spend time alone together. However, this love is clearly one-sided from the beginning. Traeger views Josie not unlike how he viewed the girls in the meat house, an object of desire more so than the person. Granted he's nicer to her, but in conversations she often talks whilst he half listens, he yearns internally for her, ignoring the world around him as he gets lost in his own fantasy. His time spent pining is described as this kind of internal limbo that slowly eats away at him. Quote, he must believe in himself, he knew that, he shouted it out loud, he must stop feeling sorry for himself, he must do something, he must tell Josie, he would. And she would love him, cried the day, and she would laugh, the knights replied. One day this comes to a boil, and Traeger confesses his love to Josie, something that greatly upsets her. I'm sure there's a few people watching this who know the uniquely gut-wrenching sadness of an unwanted confession from a connection you thought to be platonic, that sombre sense that everything will change. It's a bad situation, and it sucks to be on either side of it. We see Traeger grab Josie, exclaiming his love, only for Josie to push him away and state that it would be best if the two remained friends. There isn't a connection between them, not in that way, and whilst it hurts Traeger, it's probably for the best given the earlier context of how they interact. In the written story, this is a lot more harsh than it is in the comic, recounted through fragments of a half-forgotten conversation, Traeger too shaken to even hear anything that he's being told. Martin said in the retrospective book Dream Songs that he opened a vein with this story. So it's likely it feels so human and raw, because it is, a lot of this story seems to pull heavily from Martin's own life. Josie tries to console Traeger, telling him that there's someone out there for him, and that he's too talented to simply settle on Scracky, but Traeger is utterly inconsolable. Years pass and when we next meet him, he's left the planet altogether. 
this short-lived infatuation has profoundly affected him and will haunt him for the remainder of his days. Traeger is now living on a planet called Vendalia, where he is using corpses to work as a woodcutter. He's made a friend called Donnelly, or Don for short, and the two are discussing the ethics of using corpses for gladiatorial combat. Traeger is opposed to the work for ethical reasons, but Don says all you're doing in the arena is killing the bodies, the minds died long ago. This is one of the most interesting conversations in the story, as it touches on how the corpses are viewed in this world. Traeger, though he constantly corrects himself to refer to the corpses as things or its, views them as being somewhat human, deserving of some respect, whilst Don views them entirely as tools. Don presents his argument as the logical one, but Traeger challenges him, saying, Logical? You really ought to try feeling more than you think. Traeger's view of the corpses as human all ties back to his addiction to the meat house rather than any real empathy, as he can only get validation and connection from these false relationships with the corpses, he's conditioned himself to view them as being more human, more genuine. But the corpses aren't human. They were once, sure, but now they're just tools for people like Traeger to use. Any connection he forms with one will only ever be an act of narcissism. The only reason he swears off the arena and the meat house is explicitly because he wants to be more like the kind of man he imagines Josie would like, he wants to present himself as a moral person to others. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because he thinks it makes him more attractive. We also learn on this planet where the corpses come from, as it's stated when Traeger visits the city that the Meat Mart is supplied by freighters from across the universe. These freighters carry the corpses of debtors, criminals, and derelicts. This ties back into the classism present in this universe, the poorest are reduced to unthinking corpses that exist purely to provide labour and pleasure to those wealthier than them. It's in this city that Traeger comments that the meat houses are famous, their girls always beautiful, furthering the recurring theme of women being meat and Traeger being unable to view them beyond their surface level traits. He also ignores the fact that they are unwilling participants who have been murdered in service of his hedonism, even though very shortly before this, he was commenting on where the bodies came from. Now we know that these women were likely people in debt, or people who had to turn to crime to support themselves, we have the added context that Traeger is not only gross for being into lifeless ladies, but he's also directly deriving pleasure from systems of exploitation. Though at this point in the story, Traeger only uses corpses owned by companies, giving him the ability to offset his direct impact, Later on, he owns his own corpses. He takes a direct hand in engaging with the exploitative systems of this universe. Traeger is deeply upset at this point. He says he feels utterly cut off from life. He resents how quickly his leave from work has evaporated without him actually doing anything. One of the realest things any fictional character has ever said. He says he's been through every cafe and bar, forced a thousand contacts, but made no connections. He's still alone no matter how hard he tries, and he is trying. The phrasing of forced a thousand contacts alludes to maybe some less than reciprocal discussions, Traeger presumably just kind of speaking at strangers off screen, but again, at least he's trying. Dejected, he drinks some wine and his eyes wander to the meat house. His hands begin to tremble as he gives in to his addiction and crosses the street, asking Josie to forgive him as he steps through the doorway. Again, he's entirely shaping his life and decisions off the opinion of a woman he hasn't seen in years, and turning to hollow pleasures when he feels hopeless. Traeger breaks down to Don the following day. He's incredibly guilty about going back into a meat house, and Don consoles him. Don says, You're not a meat house, man. You're a dreamer, remember? Feeling pain is better than feeling nothing, right? Traeger, reaffirmed by his friend's words, returns to the city on his next period of leave and meets a young girl called Laurel. He doesn't love Laurel at first, he doesn't think she's particularly attractive, he says she's a little on the heavy side and more than a little on the awkward side, and in the original by Martin he comments a lot on how she's not quite at the standard set by Josie. She's also a lot less experienced sexually than the meat house girls that Traeger is used to, which is a weird thing for him to point out, he's directly comparing his girlfriend negatively to dead bodies. There is only one thing Traeger really loves about Laurel, and that's the validation she gives him. The two have a connection built on shared loneliness, and that does blossom into a love of sorts. At least, they say they love each other. 
Traeger takes a low paying job puppeting bodies for a theatre just to move closer to Laurel and Don joins him on this move. Traeger is the happiest he'll ever be for this brief period, but his life is far from perfect. His entire relationship is built on a shaky foundation, he's just settled for the next best thing, existing in a connection that exists purely to halt the loneliness of the two participants. On top of this, he can't stop talking about Josie to Laurel, he's still not over his unrequited love from years ago, at one point the two lie in bed together talking about her. Things begin to crumble rapidly. Don admits to Traeger that he likes Laurel, and Laurel, when confronted, says she loves both of the men. Traeger finds that Laurel falls asleep early, often, and the two have almost nothing to talk about. Shortly after the relationship begins, it ends as arguments tear them apart and Laurel leaves Traeger for his best friend. Traeger is outraged by this. He says it is a thousand times worse than Josie. Not because he loves Laurel more, but because he settled for Laurel. He tolerated her, and she left him. In the eyes of the narrator, this is an insult. A complete slap in the face. Again, this is written with a lot of venom and anger, as this is also something that happened to Martin. It's a semi-autobiographical recounting of things. Traeger's life once again begins to spiral. He tries calling Josie, but she's moved on and she ignores his question when he asks if she misses him. In Martin's original story, it's made more clear that Josie is someone who's had a lot of partners and she's likely seeing someone new at this point. She doesn't have room to care about Traeger, and he's being very melodramatic and needy. It's here that Traeger loses himself completely. He spends every day at the meat house, playing out fantasies based on his interactions with Josie and Laurel, reliving the highs of his life through joyless erotic rituals, replacing the woman in his life with hollow marionettes. The story says, a husk of a dead dream was all that was left of him. So it is that Traeger regresses to his basis state and we reach the final stage of his story. Years later, Traeger is with a new woman, but he says her name doesn't matter, her looks don't matter, all that matters is she exists and fills the void in his life. She says she loves him, but he thinks this will fade. He thinks, how many times can you speak the same words and feel them like you did the first time? Love, connection, friendship, all these things are a distant memory of our narrator, who is now concerned only with senseless hedonism. Traeger takes his loveless relationship and moves to a place called Dangfon, becoming an undefeated champion handler in the corpse fighting arena, abandoning what little concern he had for ethics earlier in the story and coming to view all corpses as nothing more than disposable meat. For his abandonment of ethics, he is almost immediately rewarded. This is a cruel world. Traeger has rapidly ascended to the top, his ability to manipulate the corpses seeing him become one of the undefeated champions of this blood-soaked place. He sits atop a private throne high above the arena, no longer the blue-collar worker in dead-end jobs, but rather part of the elite few who benefit from systemic victimization. So now Traeger has it all. Admirers, fans, a career and a beautiful girlfriend, but it's all a lie. He hates himself, he's still the same broken man, and it's revealed the girl he's with is a corpse he puppets, an entirely false romance between Traeger and the idea of a woman. Instead of genuine connection, he's purchased the body of a girl and shaped it to his needs. Traeger says, The universe isn't fair. It never has been and never will be, so you chase the phantom and you lose. They'll always tell you next time. Always next time, but it's all rot. Empty, stinking rot. Nobody ever finds the dream. He ends the story by concluding that the single most cruel lie in the unfair universe is the lie of love. So, real downer ending there. Like I said, it's a dark and cynical story and ends with the protagonist becoming just the worst guy ever. However, I do think it warrants discussion, as I feel there's a lot to it to be unpacked in the subtext, so now let's do some analysis. So, Meat House Man is pretty controversial, and the author himself isn't that big a fan of it. It's very easy to just discard it as a weird incel fantasy about some really gross topics, and to an extent that's true, but it's also a lot more than that. 
this story ties into very real, very human ideas around loneliness and the feeling of rejection. And it's important to note that Traeger isn't portrayed as either a helpless victim or a power fantasy throughout the story, a character archetype he would probably be if the point of the story was women are bad and will leave you or being single sucks so much, dude. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more of a message. Traeger doesn't suffer for no reason. He's a pretty bad guy who consistently refuses to change and wallows in self-pity for literal years after every single setback. That transforms this story into a compelling character study, but then the setting elevates that because it's not just Traeger's shortcomings that fail him, it's also the system he exists within. He fails on levels that are both personal and societal. Granted, our protagonist isn't played the best hand. He has a job that makes him despised, almost no friends throughout the story, and all of his relationships crash and burn for reasons that seem beyond him. But it's important to note that he isn't exactly the best partner to the people he's with throughout the story. Traeger is pretty consistently a selfish person, and his feeling of entitlement to the woman in his lives is what warps all of his relationships into the nightmare situations he finds himself in. His first interactions with women are in the meat house, and though he later claims he isn't a meat house man, it's worth noting that all of his relationships are shaped by this transactional undertone. He doesn't take much interest in Josie's interests, he just wants time alone so he can get closer to her. In the story, he talks a lot about touching or a lack of it, commenting on how they sit together but never touch. His confession is marked by him grabbing her and touching her face, overstepping the boundary that he's viewed as an obstacle. He also often thinks about how she views him, centering himself in their dynamic, and he goes as far as to craft an entirely new persona just to try and have more of a chance of sleeping with her. His relationship with her is largely viewed as a war of attrition on his part, hoping that one day she'll be worn down enough to let him do whatever he wants, so when she becomes dismissive later in the story, it's portrayed as a betrayal, but really it isn't. She doesn't need to care about him, what's he ever done for her? He puts his head on her shoulder at one point just because he suspects his co-worker is watching him, again just showing her off to rival men, rather than doing anything because he actually cares about her. Josie is Traeger's manic pixie dream girl, more an idea than a person in his mind. He revisits the meat house later in the story after failing to pick up women whilst drunk in bars. I doubt he has the purest intentions here either, purely based on the setting of these encounters or the wording that he forced these connections. For all his talk of love, Traeger doesn't really seem to care that much about it, and this is most apparent when he just replaces all of his relationships with a fake woman that he's puppeting, and doesn't really see that much of a change in his style as a partner from it. He also transposes moments from his time spent with Josie and Laurel onto erotic situations performed with undead sex workers that he views as nothing more than me. To him, the woman he claims to love can be swapped out for lifeless bodies and he sees no issue with this. Traeger is the stereotypical 21st century nice guy. For all his moralizing about ethics to Don and his shoulder to cry on roll with Josie, he's a meathouse man. He's incapable of forming healthy relationships because all he cares about is the sexual aspect. We see the nice guy turns out to be meat house man arc play out at least once a month in influencer circles. Traeger's time with Laurel is especially interesting in this regard as almost all of his dialogue about her is about sex, how she can't perform like a meat house girl, how she's taller and heavier than Josie. Traeger only ever points out her physical characteristics, and he only notices the relationship in decline when he's less physically pleased with her. Her leaving him for Don does hurt, but I wonder how much of the relationship we see is coloured by Traeger as a narrator, and his desire for connection overriding his ability to view red flags. The way it's presented to us, Laurel is passive until one day she goes cold. It's almost a complete switch that I believe is only jarring because we see it from Traeger's point of view. He's not paying that much attention to her, so it, of course it's going to come out of nowhere. Martin is exceptionally talented at writing within character voice, so it's important to note that we only see this character from one perspective. We see it only from Traeger's point of view. So there's probably a lot going on in these dynamics that we're just not partial to. 
Traeger never really stops viewing other people as meat following that first visit to the meat house, and his transformation into the cold champion of blood sports doesn't feel out of character at all, rather a natural progression of his arc. He always viewed the corpses as meat, he's just willing to butcher them now. His defining trait is being an excellent manipulator, being far more skilled at corpse handling than any of his contemporaries, and his desire to manipulate women is just an extension of this. He grows frustrated with his own girlfriend because she can't pleasure him like he himself can, and he replaces her with a woman he can control, just like he can control the men in the arena or in the ore pits. Traeger spends his life looking to force connections, but is always disappointed when other people don't give him exactly what he wants. He's completely unwilling to compromise in any situation. It's for these reasons I think some of the critique of Meat House Man just being this weird fantasy Martin wrote because he got friendzoned are kind of missing the point. The story isn't that. It's a complex character study that only grows more relevant as discussions around loneliness in the digital age become more pronounced. There's interesting parallels between Traeger's pining and voyeurism throughout the text and how online interactions are. The rise of down bad guys on any given social media can be seen through this fictional character. Traeger is an interesting figure because you can sympathize with him, understand why he feels the way he does, why he grows to be the person he is, but he's not an aspirational figure and he's flat out gross most of the time. Whilst I understand him, I also understand why Laurel and Josie don't reciprocate his feelings. Traeger never looks inward. He feels as though he's entitled to women simply for existing, and the closest to real connection he can ever get is through manipulation and lies. He always says that tomorrow will be the day he changes, but he never does. At one point he comments on how the mundane routine of his job kills his aspiration to better himself, which is a very real and understandable human thought, but also a character flaw. He doesn't ever stop to think that he might be the problem, and would rather believe that the very concept of love is a lie than challenge himself at any point. We say this play out between each section of his life, where, following any setback, he just leaves the planet he's on and moves somewhere else before repeating the exact same mistakes and falling into the same self-destructive cycles. To an extent, Traeger is a victim of societal victimization. Corpse handlers are extremely limited in their ability to develop interactions. They're a highly distrusted group of people who for the most part live on barren corpse worlds, with very few places to meet each other and limited leave from work to form connections. But even when Traeger is able to escape the backwater of Scracky, he doesn't unlearn the toxicity that's been instilled with him, despite being given ample chances to break his bad habits and move on. He never stops comparing aspects of his new life with Laurel to his days in the meat house. He never challenges his own beliefs in any way. He never compromises with anyone. Whenever he refers to himself as being changed or the new Traeger, it's a facade that he puts up explicitly just because he wants to manipulate people or be closer to what he feels others will find desirable. His final speech is the same self-defeating mindset he had at the very start of the story. Traeger undergoes an almost completely static arc in spite of the things that happen to him. That's what makes this a compelling character study. It's equal parts societal impacts and personal issues that mould Traeger into the deplorable cautionary tale he becomes, and in becoming this monster, he doesn't actually change that much. His worldview is slightly shifted, and he changes a handful of things about himself. But that's it. Martin would later refine the character of Traeger in his writing, with Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones being the most iconic incarnation of this archetype across his works. I actually found out about this story through a video on Baelish by Kevin Pendragon that I highly recommend if you enjoyed this video, link below. Traeger is more than an incel power fantasy, even though this story can get a little beat it chick in its final chapter. He's a profound look at how loneliness can warp the mind, how a dependency on transactional relationships can make someone grow cold, and I honestly think this character deserves to be discussed more in discussions around morally grey characters that relate to uniquely modern issues, particularly around the nature of masculine slash feminine relations on the internet and the rise of the meat house men of the world wide web. I highly recommend you read this story, come to your own interpretations, and share them. This story should be discussed more, so now I'll hand it over to you. 
Anyway, that's all I have to say on this topic. This is a shorter video whilst I'm working on a far longer one on fear and hunger. I lost all my footage, as I said in my last community post, so that's going to take longer than expected. Hopefully, it'll be out soon. If you enjoyed and still here, press the nice buttons. Uh, shout out to my first channel member who just kind of appeared one day. I don't think I ever said anything about doing that, but shout out to you. And uh, to everyone else, see you around. Enjoy the rest of your day.